I, I was proud of who my father was. I was proud to be his son. He was very intelligent. I liked what he stood for. A giant in my life. That's my dad. My daddy was such a proud man. He was one of the first black police officers in Hattiesburg. And this is his photograph right here. He got on the police department in 1965. This is his badge. He's the first African American to be hired on the police department. And I always wanted to be like him when I grew up. In spite of everything that I went through with him. One night we sitting on the porch, and he gonna jump on me that night, and I just had got enough of him hitting me. The problem that me and my father had was my father was very abusive towards my mother. And one night I got to the point to where I wanted to kill him. He never wanted me around because we never got along because I just wasn't gonna stand by and let him abuse my mom. My mother told me that my father was searching for me because he said I had killed somebody. When I get to his office, I'm sitting there with my father and I'm crying. I'm asking my father, what is going on? You know I haven't did anything. He told me to shut up. You know you did it. I, and I'm still playing to him. I haven't did anything. I wasn't even here. He said, shut up. We didn't understand what was going on and why, you know, my father was booking him. And, and, and Larry was saying that he was innocent and that he didn't do it. And he said, just sign this and trust me. I'm going to get you out of this here. So I signed what he told me to sign. I didn't, really, I didn't know what it was. My father said, well, you did a good job. He said, I do what you do, you go to prison, you stay in there two years, keep your mouth shut, stay out of trouble, and I promise you I'll have you back at home. That was no trial, that was no court, that was nothing. If he'd have killed a man, it wouldn't have been so bad on me. If this crime was ever investigated that my father sent me to prison for, I never would have went to prison. So I know that my father knew that I was innocent. And knowing your child sitting there, innocent, it hurts. I've been in this prison for 13 years and I've never seen anybody escape from this prison in women's clothes. When it got dark, I went into the room, and dressed myself up, put the lipstick on, the fingernail polish, the stuff for your eyes. I think I was pretty though. <laughs> I got our car keys and I walked out of the door through the gate and the car is like in the parking lot outside the gate. So this lady came out and she asked me to stop the car at the front gate. So I got out of the car, opened the trunk, let her search it. She looked in the car, closed the trunk back and she told me, she said, ma'am, you have a good night. I said, ma'am, you have one too and she opened the thing up and I just drove out. So on my way, I'm driving, it's dark. I'm going fast and now my car is swooping around this curve and I don't lost control. It goes off the side of the curve and flips over three times. I had no idea where I was. I just knew that I was off the prison grounds. And so I get out of the car, I ran into these woods and just kept running and ran half the night. And when I come out of the woods running, it was dark, I couldn't see anything. I remember coming off the cliff and running into, directly into the water. I looked this way, I seen maybe 75 people coming towards me from that direction with guns and dogs and riding on four-wheelers, shining big lights on, tr on our truck cars. I didn't have anywhere to go. So I seen this one tree sitting here. It was like a tall tree like this one here and I climbed up the tree and wrapped around it and I held myself there. They stood down there and talked and said, well, when we catch him, we're gonna kill him. One guard got in between my legs and he kicked me about five times, right between the legs, real hard. They just started torturing me. One guy hit me in the face with a nine millimeter gun. Some guy found me and put me on the back of his truck and rushed me to the hospital. And they said, if he'd have got me there 10 minutes later, I would've been dead. Larry with that big knots in his head and his face was all swollen up. He's in a bad shape. The FBI came up there the next day. I don't want to go to my dying grave with my name still where it's at. I want my name cleared. To me, freedom is exonerating my name. If I die today, I, could, I will be dying as a convict. Okay? I don't want to die like that. I want my name cleared because that's the only way that I can ever be free. Of.